this video started out as a budget tag buying guide and ended up as a warning on which tags you should avoid. And I'm also telling you to avoid the most popular tag at 1000, which is the Audiocular D07 for reasons which I'll get to. The biggest problem with the budget audiophile market right now is the digital to analog converters or tags. Since all, most all of the phones we buy these days do not come with 3.5mm headphone jacks, even budget models no longer have it. So we need to buy something that converts digital signals into audio since humans do not hear in zeros and ones, we hear analog sound. Me, I personally use the IFI Audio Go Link, but even this has numerous quality control issues and like literal complete failure. So I don't even know if this is recommendable. And in the same price tier, we have Fio K11, which has so many quality control issues. And some people have even reported the DAC breaking down with software updates, which is extremely weird. So neither of these two are recommended even in the 3K segment. Moving to the 1K segment, me and a lot of other credible reviewers have recommended the Audiocular D07. It has a dedicated amp chip, not that it matters a lot, but it's there. And it has a pretty decent DAC chip, which is the CX31993. And it seems to have pretty good build quality for the price as well. Fun fact, the Headphone Zone X DD Hi-Fi Hi-Res DAC is a one-to-one -one rebrand of this, just for double the price. So we thought it was a good recommendation for 1000 until I've seen a lot of issues crop up in the recent months, which makes me not want to recommend it as much. So a good DAC should not have any static or hissing noises when you plug it in. It shouldn't create channel imbalance for the IAM. It should fit easily. You shouldn't have to like literally poke it in like a lot of IAMs do that with the Audiocular D07 and even the IFI Go Link. And it should have good build quality and it shouldn't randomly disconnect or play and pause music for no reason. And a 4.4 mm option it is a nice to have, but not compulsory, of course. And then it should offer good volume range, just um, boosting the volume to 5% and you're already maxed out, that's bad too. But in the so, last few days, I've come across so many issues that I'm not able to recommend the D07 that confidently anymore. The biggest issue I've heard is static noises or hissing noises when you plug it in and that completely spoils the experience, especially for me. I also heard of worse issues like channel imbalance is one of them and some units are just not working. You plug it in and nothing, it doesn't play the music. So I think we have to change our default 1K DAC recommendations and I have a couple. First one is Fio J11. It's sold on Headphone Zone and that has a very reliable customer support network unlike um, Concept Cart, which doesn't even reply to queries until the return window ends, which is honestly terrible. There are two other DACs in the segment which you should probably avoid, like there's the Audiocular D08. I haven't seen such drastic issues from the D08, but I think the number of people who got the D07 is on a much larger scale. And if more people buy the D08, we might find similar issues since it uses the same CX31993 chip, which is, I think, the problem in the budget segment. The Fio J11 isn't completely issue-free either. Remember the KA11? Yeah, that is a DAC which had a lot of issues with software or firmware updates. And the J11 is doing fine for now, but if you buy it, I urge you not to update the software. You also have the option of buying the Audiocular D07, but instead of concept cart, you can try the audio store instead because they at least respond to queries within 24 hours, which concept cart does not do. There are some others from Abigail, like the Abigail Monk something, the Abigail Venture Electronics Pro and the normal one. These sit in the 800 to 1100 tier and I think are kind of outdated for now. And I would suggest getting the Fio J11 over both of those. There's also one DAC from KZ called the AM01, but that has a similar amount of quality control issues to the, Z, to the D07, or it's even worse, and nobody trusts KZ with quality control anyway, so I would avoid that option completely. There's one last good DAC in the budget segment, and that's the Apple dongle. For 1000 rupees, it's still a really good DAC, and if you ignore the numbers, because it theoretically doesn't support 300,000 kilohertz or whatever, you can ignore that and just get the Apple dongle. If you have an iPhone, there is no better DAC. I've tried a couple of Jcalis, I've tried 7 hertz. I've tried a lot of DACs for iPhones and none of them are as reliable as the Apple dongle and none of them are as cheap either. 
and these kind of break down in about six months they develop hissing noises they sometimes randomly stop working so i wouldn't recommend any tack other than the apple dongle if you have an iphone with a lightning port even for android i think the apple dongle usb-c version is more than sufficient for a vast majority of iams just that some people like listening at higher volumes for no good reason which you should not do and the maximum volume of the apple dongle is kind of limited somehow in countries outside of the eu or us i think it is if you're wondering why i asked you to stop caring about those numbers it's because of something you can you can do it yourself actually, it's called the Nyquist Sampling Theorem, look it up. Just divide the maximum number of kilohertz that a music is playing in and divide it by two. You will get a number that is greater than the human hearing frequency range. So to summarize the budget tax section, you can either buy the D08 if you trust Audiocular, you can get the D07 from the audio store instead of concept cart, or you can buy the Fio J11 from Headphone Zone. You have one more option and that's the Apple dongle. And that is more than good enough for Android, take my word for it. And for iPhones with a lightning port, there is no better deal. Moving one segment higher, we reach the 2K segment where there are a quite a few good options. There was the Moondrop Click Mini, which is now discontinued, and I think it's difficult to find anywhere, unfortunately. There's the 7Hz71, which is almost like the same as the Apple dongle, so I would not suggest the 7Hz71. And then we also have Tempo Tech HD, so not R2, I think it's called. And this has been out of stock for a while, but if it comes back, that's also a very good tack. There is Headphone Zone DD Hi-Fi, but looking at the quality control issues with the D07 and then knowing that it uses the same parts, I cannot recommend the DD Hi-Fi. And now we have Kiwi Ears Allegro Mini. This is actually the best budget tack since it has 3.5mm and 4.4mm and it doesn't have static hissing noises. That's it, that's all we need. And the only issue is it's not exactly a 1000 rupees DAC, which is what most people are looking for and you have to extend your budget. If you're shopping at 2K, however, it's best recommended to extend to this stack. And now in the 3K to 4K segment, we have two options, traditionally Fio KA11 and IFI Audio GoLink, both of which have too many quality control issues for me to confidently recommend. So I would suggest the Shanling UA1 Plus instead, which has comparatively lower amount of issues and it's a very reliable, pretty decent DAC. And if you can extend to 5K, which I don't recommend doing normally but the Moondrop Dawn Pro is the best one you can get for that price and beyond this for IEMs or most IEMs is completely pointless actually beyond 2k itself is completely pointless but um, the only reason you're paying more is for better quality control at this point and more usable volume range but no actual meaningful difference to the sound quality. There was a budget IEM out recently, the Rose Technics um, Aurora Ultra, and it had a free DAC inside it. It was so horrible that if you're ever getting the Ultra, do not get the DAC version. Yeah, it's 500 or 600 extra, but it's better to spend on a proper DAC instead of getting this garbage. The one that they give is literally unusable. It has so much static and static hits, hissing noises. It doesn't connect properly, and I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. So I have seen some people claim something called DAC coloring, where if you plug in a DAC, an IAM becomes bassier or it has better mid-range. Um, all the tests I've seen so far do not confirm this, so I think it has something to do with the volume you're listening at, because 30% volume from the GoLink and 30% volume straight out of my laptop's headphone jack and 30% volume from the Apple dongle or 30% volume from a 4.4mm cable None of these are the same. So the perceived differences you're feeling are probably with the changes in volume range. Suppose you're listening at 60 decibels on one thing, and if you're listening at 75 or another thing, you might unknowingly attribute these changes to increased bass or increased mid-range, which are, at least for now, based on all frequency response measurements, are not true. And the only thing that majorly can change your sound is equalizer. We have two other options. You can directly get a Type-C IEM instead of getting a DAC and a 3.5 mm one. This is not as future proof if you decide to expand into more IEMs in the future in the hobby, but otherwise, if you're planning to just get a Type-C one, there are some decent options. We have the Tangzu one or Type-C, which is a very good warm Type-C IEM. If you're treble sensitive, it's really good. And it is better than the um, Fio JD1 X headphone zone. And the 1500 segment also has the Moondrop Quark 2, which is it's a boring sound, but you can EQ it if you find it boring. And it's a much better overall product than the Fio JD1 2. 
and there is the Moondrop GU if you like this kind of lively bright sound signature the only issue is the fit and the ear hooks and it doesn't have a detachable cable but if you are willing to look past that it's a very good 1.9k IM and finally there's the Chutu DSP with a slightly dark tilted balanced sound by default which you can customize with the Moondrop app which is a whole experience in itself but there are some recommendable type c options instead if you don't want to buy a DAC and none of these have horrible resolution or unusable levels of resolution as some people have told me so you can buy these there is one final option and that is getting a type c cable so these type c cables cost around 900 rupees they have a DAC chip inbuilt and they do not really have problems i have tried this audiocular type c cable i've tried it with all the budget IAMs, it doesn't give me any problem. And you can get a type C cable instead of getting a DAC only if you do not want to expand to other IAMs in the future. And I want to end this video by saying concept cart, it's seriously high time they change their customer support because replying a day before the return window ends or a day after the return window ends is completely pointless because the customers are not getting what they pay for. And if all the issues with defects and quality control issues are sold during the sale, that's not helping anyone either. So at least reply within 24 hours, keep a 24 hour window, reply within that and try to get the exchanges or repairs done within a month because I personally had to wait three months for a repair and many people have had worse experiences by spending a lot of money. There are two topics I forgot to address at the time of filming. One of them is there's the IQ and OnePlus have these converters which sell for around 300 to 400. I have tried them out personally and they are actually pretty good. They don't have a lot of power and amplification but as far as the digital to analog conversion goes, they have okay quality control too, they don't have hissing noises. And if you're on a super ultra budget, get these if you can't extend to the 1K segment. Because the only advantage, as I said, is the theoretical perceived improvement in resolution and that is also something attributed to placebo effects. And I think this should be obvious, but if you have the budget for either a DAC or an IAM and you already have a good enough DAC, I would suggest getting the IAM instead. That would make a lot more difference than buying a different DAC. And if an IAM sounds bad on an Apple dongle, it sounds bad on a MacBook headphone jack, it sounds bad on your smartphone's headphone jack, and it sounds bad with any source, then just buying a new DAC will not completely change the sound signature. Buying a new DAC will not make the bass better. Buying a new DAC will not make the mids better. Buying a new DAC will not completely transform your audio experience. And if the IAM sounds bad, return it. Do not burn in for 200 hours until the return window expires. Do not buy a 3K DAC for a budget IAM. And do not waste your time. If the IAM sounds bad to you, then none of these fixes will help. Thank you.